Culture and Posture Japanese culture that was shown in the museum portrayed two women kneeling with their feet directly beneath them, sitting on their heels while bowing their heads all the way to the floor with completely straight backs. It is common for Japanese people to sit like this, which requires a certain amount of flexibility and focus. One thing that I noticed is that one of the women was shown as being much older than the other. This is interesting because I am able to imitate the posture and position that I observed in the museum, but it takes a lot of focus for me to keep my back straight and my shoulders back. The older woman portrayed can probably maintain this position without much thought because she has done so many times before. Even though I am able to imitate this, my grandparents would not be able to even if they tried because they have had poor posture for many years, sitting with hunched over shoulders and a slouched back. I asked my grandma yesterday if she would be able to sit down on the floor at all, and she said she can manage to sit on the floor but would not be able to cross her legs. And she laughed because she said the problem is not getting to the floor, but standing back up again. The other exhibit that I observed were the Eskimos. Environment and Movement the Eskimos lived in or near the Arctic Circle, which called for lots of clothing and layers to keep them warm. It was common for them to wear fur and seal skin for waterproofing. By wearing lots of heavy clothing, this would slow down their movement. Not only did the clothing affect their movement, but by being so far north, the terrain has a lot of snow and ice. When walking on ice, people tend to shuffle their feet to prevent from falling. All of this combined could really have an effect on the Eskimos' ability to find and hunt food to provide for their families because it really slows them down. This is hard to compare to today's environment because we don't rely on hunting as our source of food. We have the ability to avoid the ice and cold as much as possible and buy food in the stores. When I was a kid, I would get bundled up in many layers to go sledding outside and it took a lot of extra effort to walk around with snow pants, jackets, and boots on, and it made it difficult to do anything but walk and maybe run very slowly. I can only imagine how much extra work having fur and seal skin on to keep them warm, it would make it much more difficult for them to be able to hunt and provide for their families. After going to the museum, I really started thinking about all the different influences that we have in our environment that really affect our posture and movement. And it's there's so many out there from clothing to where we walk, where we live, where we work. There's many different influences and I'm glad that we were able to do this. So we really will have to think outside of the box when we have future patients, not just go by the book, but really think of every single possibility that could possibly affect a person's posture and movement.